Awesome. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the last meeting of Chilwak City Council for 2023. Uh, I first want to acknowledge that we are on the unceded territory of the Stalo people. First order of business, Madam Clerk. First, Superintendent Davey Lee with the Upper Fraser Valley Regional Detachment is in attendance to present the Community Policing Quarterly Report. Good afternoon. Oh, I see Davey Lee, you've got the floor. Good, Good afternoon, Your Honor, uh, Council. So, uh, this portion is the open. Your Honor. Ooh. Oh, Your Honor. Okay. Sorry, Your Worship. Okay. Yeah, I feel like we're court. Usually, when I have to stand before a grab in court, right? <laughs> I've been called worse. It's all good. <laughs> good one. Uh, okay, so uh, to begin, uh, the quarterly report. So the crime stats from the third quarter, uh, you guys already have been provided a copy of this. Uh, this provides a snapshot of our current crime trends. Uh, we're still trending upwards, and if you have any questions on these uh, numbers, uh, please let me know. Uh, community engagement. Uh, this is for the quarter of July, August, September, and uh, we participate in many community events uh, this, in that quarter. A few of the highlights uh, were attending the Canada Canada celebrations in all of our UFRD communities. Uh, the Kindness Chain Kids Fun Day event, which is organized by the uh, Kindness Chain Ch of Chilliwack Association. And they are a nonprofit organization that does good deeds throughout Chilliwack. Uh, over 400 kids were in attendance, and the day was filled with activities for the kids to enjoy, including learning about police cars, which is always a big hit. Uh, our own Corporal Brad Rendell had just as much fun as the kids as he got to meet uh, Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Uh, nice. Tim Horton's Day, Tim Horton's Camp Day, I should say. Uh, each year, our members uh, look forward to helping out with this event. Uh, Fraser Valley Regional District Reading Program, medal presentation. Uh, Corporal Marshall Thompson was proud to present uh, participants of the Sardis Library Summer Reading Club with their achievements uh, medals. Congratulations to all who completed uh, this program. Uh, the Shui Village Overdose Prevention Day. Uh, the, this event was hosted by Shui Village in partnership with the Chilliwack Community Action Team. Uh, it was a well attended event that brought a lot of community partners together. Constable Bethany Williams participated in the live butterfly release, which she was honored to be a part of. Uh, together with Crime Prevention Services and the Chilliwack Fire Department, held a child car seat clinic. And the next clinic will be in the spring of 2024. In September, we did Coffee of the Cop, uh, which was held at Blends Coffee, located at Salish Plaza, uh, hosting our last Coffee of the Cop for 2023 at the Cottonwood Mall, which is tomorrow. So if you are inclined to join us between 10 and 11 for a coffee and conversation. Strategic plan. Do I have to... Sorry. No, oh, sorry. Uh, we've completed stakeholder interviews, uh, came together as a group to set our goals and plans. Uh, we are currently just finalized all of our priorities, uh, setting the goals for 24 through 26. So that plan should be coming to, final, uh, I guess, finalization piece of it in the early part of the new year, to which we can then roll that plan out and advise council accordingly as to what's all the initiatives in there. And there's a number of them. I think there's like 26 or 28 of them in there. So, um, But anyway, uh, stay tuned for that. Great. Partnerships, uh, a commitment to community partnerships remain a top priority. Opportunities to enhance public safety, uh, build trust, and address shared concerns through joint initiatives and engagement efforts. Uh, Cultus Lake, uh, through a partnership with the Cultus Lake Park Board, uh, Chill Lake RCMP provides patrols of the foreshore, the residential area, and on the water. Uh, these strategic collaborations with our partners were successful in addressing road safety as well as alleviating some of the, alleviating some of the uh, traffic and congestion. And moving into 2024, we look forward to building on a current foundation as we continue to collaborate and improve on making Cultus Lake uh, safe and enjoyable for everyone. This year, we also collaborated with the City of Chilliwack Bylaw, Safer Schools, Safer Roads, I mean, uh, School District 33, Speed Watch for a back to school uh, safety campaign in September. Uh, focus on promoting road safety awareness and community engagement to ensure a safe return to school for students. Uh, Speed Watch volunteers had 19 deployments with our traffic unit. Uh, 26 tickets were issued with 34 uh, warnings. Uh, there was also the CN Rail Safety Week. Uh, during the Rail Safety Week, members of the traffic team teamed up with the CN Police to help raise awareness of rail safety. 
uh, one day active enforcement. Uh, they were issuing uh, 65 violation tickets, uh, most of which was for disobey stop sign, but also included excessive speed, uh, no driver's license and no insurance for, uh, and failure to wear a seatbelt. Uh, MICER, the Mobile Integrated Crisis Response Team. In July, the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions announced expansion of the province's Mobile Integrated Crisis Response Team uh, as part of the BC Safer Communities Action Plan and in partnership with the RCMP Lower Mainland District, Abbotsford Police Department, and Mental Health and Substance Use uh, Program created four MICER teams. Uh, the Chill Like MICER Team was launched on November 6th, and we are currently seeing very positive results. Could I ask you a question about the CN Rail? Yeah. Now, are those members RCMP members like you? No, they're not. But they have the power of the, the, the RCMP for... So CN, CN Police is uh, what we call a, not a, like, like a secondary police force, not a primary police force. So okay. they look after predominantly their uh, private property, which is the CN tracks. And okay. uh, they certainly alert us and you know, any thefts, that kind of stuff. But... Uh, but for example, a sudden death um, that would occur there, the primary response is coming from the RCMP. So we still okay. have to go to those calls. Okay, but you so. mentioned uh, seatbelt violations and failure to stop. Does that... Yeah, they can issue those while they're on CN's property. Oh, okay. So over the railway tracks, they're actually on... So you actually come out of public property onto CN's property and then cross back into public property oh, again, okay. right? okay. So that's where they're enforcing those type okay. of things. Right? Okay, okay. I, I just get asked that question a lot and I... I didn't know the answer, so thank you for that, Davey. Yeah. No, there's going to be a little bit of leeway there. You know, when they see the violation, it takes some time to stop the car, but they also don't wander on to number one, for example. You know what I mean? Like, it's outside the jurisdictional area. So. Okay. Okay, so I'll leave you with one story, uh, if uh, there's any other questions. But uh, this is kind of interesting. So we had a reported kidnapping call. One evening in the month of August, uh, two concerned citizens reported that they had observed two males uh, forced a female who was wearing a distinctive outfit into the back of a vehicle. The witness reported that the female uh, victim was struggled, but no cries for help were heard uh, as the vehicle departed traveling southbound on Young Road. Uh, due to the seriousness of the uh, event, outside resources were supplied from Burnaby, which consists of a accredited, accredited team commander, a uh, serious crime sergeant, and two serious crime constables. Extensive uh, canvas of security footage was urgently done in the area. Investigators instructed many people from their sleep in order to obtain key surveillance video, which followed the movements of the suspect vehicle throughout the night and into the early morning. As a result of this extensive canvas, two, video, two key video surveillance footages were obtained. Uh, one from Save on Foods, which showed the prior, uh, that prior to the reported kidnapping, the unknown female victim was observed wearing the same distinctive outfit, walking freely into a grocery store with two individuals who appear to be her friends. The second video from a residence on Hope River Road also showed the group appear to be joining themselves in a playful manner. Uh, this video, this new evidence allowed the investigative team to downgrade the seriousness of the original complaint from a kidnapping to, uh, to a check uh, well-being. Uh, investigation continued into the early hours of the next day. Uh, members located the registered owner of the vehicle, of the suspect vehicle, uh, during the interview process. Uh, it was revealed that the registered owner's son had been driving the vehicle around with several of his friends during the night in question. With all the individuals now identified, investigators spoke with the others involved who confirmed the sequence of the events. In the end, the kidnapping was deemed to be false. The female had become upset with one of the individuals in the group who jokingly ran after her and pretended to kidnap her by bringing her back to the car. So at this point, I just want to remind the public of being mindful of reactions in public while creating content for social media. While such a content appears realistic, it can lead to, of course, unintended consequences, such as unnecessary emergency calls to 911. This not only strains our emergency services, but also divert our resources to actual emergencies. So just be aware of the potential impact that misleading content could have on public safety. That's quite the story. Questions, comments? Okay. Um, if you can lower your computer screens, I'm a little short, perfect. All right, House of Mercer. Thanks, uh, that sounds all great, uh, but back to slide one, please. Slide one. I think that's what the uh, public is most interested in. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, maybe you can provide some comments as to why uh, everything is up. Um, you know, we, we talk about um, the funding that we put into, like, the prolific offender strategies for targeted enforcement, um, yet the things that we would... Ex you would 
think that they would be focused on are all areas that are, uh, in some cases, up significantly. Um, maybe you can just add some comments, then I have one more question. Go ahead. So uh, I think the overall crime statistics of 2023 is, uh, is up. Uh, there's no doubt there. Um, I don't know uh, precisely as to why, outside the fact that things are just getting back to, um, I'll call it normal, from the was back the pa pandemic period. Um, while we see our numbers up, uh, that's consistently also across other lower mainland detachments and other communities. So we're not necessarily unique in our situation here. Um, I think a lot of times that, uh, you know, the things like uh, uh, the gatherings, uh, the, I don't know, the concerts, the uh, drinking driving has gone up. So I think a lot of those uh, cooped up, pent up uh, frustrations uh, that uh, last for two couple of years has, uh, has, just, has grown to have people coming out again, letting their hair down and do things that uh, are obviously not wise and, and so on and so forth. So I think a lot of those situations are starting to, we're starting to see that. Um, and then of course the numbers are starting to show. Again, keeping in comparison that they are uh, you know, significant enough probably from last year, but from 2021, they're not as bad, um, but they do that going up. Yeah, so it's hard, it's hard to tell from your stats, but you know, it, um, it, it's, it's hard to tell here because you're going, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3, but it would be nice to know how you compare last year. Right. Right, and that's kind of absent from the slide. Okay. Um, now, the province in their brilliance came out with a prolific offender strategy, or chronic or whatever, is, is that what they called it, prolific? The prol uh, prolific offender program, you yeah. mean? Or? Is that yeah. the David Eby program? I think, yeah. So, but in his wisdom, he didn't include property crime um, in it, uh, which has always been most communities' problems. Um, would these be any different when it comes to property crimes if some of your prolific offenders that are doing property crimes could be part of that program where they get priority in court? Um, I know there was a lot of consternation on the part of uh, not just the RCMP but other police forces uh, uh, in the province that the prolific offender program, which was long waited for, which uh, then included dedicated prosecutors and the list goes on, as you know, um, didn't include people that are just doing 100 property crimes mm -hmm. a year and they decided not to include that in the strategy. Um, might, that have hel might that help here? Like, I, I don't know if it's going up because of one person or 50 people, I, I guess. And, and again, this slide, uh, hopefully for next quarter, um, you know, there be, could be some comparison against, uh, you know, Q1 last year. So we have an understanding if it's, you know, maybe gone up in Q3, but overall for the year, it's not any different. But we can't tell from this. Right. So yes, so, so the next presentation for sure will be our, our wrap up year end, and uh, in a conjunction, comparison, comparatively speaking to 2022, uh, we'll make sure we bring 2021 stats as well. So just to kind of show you the highlight of how it's, it has gone up, but I gotta say 2020. Uh, two was a normal year. Like it was actually a very low year for crime stats in comparison to 21s and 20s even. So uh, it's actually gone down quite significantly, almost double digits the other way. So I think we're just coming back at that medium par a little bit. It's a, it is a little bit higher than 21s, but not by a whole lot more. But that being said, uh, going back to the prolific offender program, I know there's a new program. Uh, it's one that we're still working with. It is targeted towards property crimes, but it has to be violent property crimes. Um, and there's some criteria there that's uh, reduce uh, our ability to, to nominate property uh, prolific offenders. Uh, that said, there is, I think, one person that's in there in the program that I'm aware of that we have seen some successes with. Um, that person's in jail. Um, but overall, I think, I, I think that, you know, the program can be still tweaked, still uh, advanced a bit. Uh, and I know that uh, they just reached out recently asking for opinion about the program. So it's, it's, that's one's administered by the Corrections Canada. that we nominate a person. The idea is to back to the, uh, I think back, well, five, six years ago, in, in the Surrey, back in the Surrey model, I guess, where they had one crown, one agency, and everybody just tracked the same guy over, it doesn't matter where they go, right? Where, where they came into the crime. That's the same idea, except it's, it's regulated to only violent, it has to have violence attached to it. It can't be just, just property crime. No, I'm aware of that. Okay. Um, I just, you know, the, the complaints we get at the city are about my broken window, the vandalism, my fence has been kicked down, 
The windows have been broken out of my car. Nothing was stolen. It's just pure property crying over and over and over. And, uh, uh, you know, we didn't talk about it anymore. I just know that that's been omitted from the Premier's uh, prolific offender, even if the person's done 300 in a year. It's not part of them. But, yeah, um, for, you know, for maybe 2024, even in the open session, it would be helpful to know how this tracks against um, uh, last year. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Shields, and your worship, and just a question through to OIC Lee. So, staying on that prolific offender um, um, theme here. So, as I look at crimes against persons, is I look at that as more like a, a violence thing, and I wouldn't assume that a prolific offender is going around and hitting people with a bat. But as crimes against person, <coughs> excuse me, crimes against person, is that? Is that theft? Is that the theft side? And then property crimes is just the vandalism side? In, in essence, uh, I think all property crimes, uh, regards to break-ins, thefts, uh, uh, vehicles, um, those type of things are always the property crime. The uh, crimes against persons are predominantly assaults, um, any, any threats, sex assaults, uh, those type of crimes. But going back to prolific offenders, they can be because they could be uh, involved in the drug debt, they could be shaking people down, they could, they're just involved in the all over, overall in, uh, crime enterprise, right? So that could involve, of course, a, a violent offense. Crossover in, to both Robberies. categories. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions, comments? Thank you, sir. We'll. Um, We'll see you in closed. Thank you. Great. Next item, Madam Clerk. Next is a recommendation that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held October 5th be adopted as circulated. Move Councilor Westring, second Council Mercer. Discussion, all those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next is a recommendation that the consent agenda be approved as presented. Move Councilor Lum, second Council Shields. Discussion, all those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next item, Your Worship, is a recommendation that Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw number 5367, which proposes to amend the text of the Affordable Rental Housing Zone to include a club or lodge as a permitted use and address off-street parking requirements for property located at 45835 Spadina Avenue be adopted. Move adoption, move Councillor Lum, second Councillor Clute. Discussion? Those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Next item. Yep. Zoning bylaw amendment bylaw number 5368, which proposes to rezone property located at 45835 Spadina Avenue from a town center commercial zone to an affordable rental housing zone be adopted. Move Councilor Westrink, second Councilor Shields. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, opposed motion carried. Next item. It's a recommendation that Council approve the issuance of development variance permit 1274 with respect to property located at 45835 Spadina Avenue, subject to recommendations as stipulated within the draft development variance permit. Move Councillor Reed, second Councillor Shields. Discussion? Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Next item is a recommendation that Council receive the presentation on the provincial housing statutes for information. Get it on the table. Move Councillor Clute, second Councillor Westrink. Uh, Ms. Villeneuve? Yep. Go ahead, please. Uh, your Worship, members of Council. As you know, numerous legislative changes have been made by the provincial government recently, resulting in the most significant shift regarding planning and land use management in the Local Government Act in decades. Uh, for each topic reviewed today, there will be a summary of the new legislation, followed by comments on how it impacts Chilliwack. And the province does continue to release details, and some elements of this presentation are subject to change as more information is provided by the government. Uh, the first bill creates a new legislation for development and amenity cost charges, adding four additional services for municipalities to consider as part of their DCC programs, and creating an amenity cost charge program to help fund uh, amenities, and again, at the discretion of the local government to use. Both programs will be reviewed by staff and any recommended changes brought back to council for future consideration. The second bill relates to development around transit-oriented areas. The province has identified transit areas and set minimum residential density below which a city cannot refuse development. Cities must also not require off-street parking for residential development within a transit-oriented area. And cities must designate transit-oriented areas by bylaw by June 30th, 2024. And some areas take effect immediately, including the city's downtown exchange. 
So what this means in Chilliwack is the downtown exchange is a transit-oriented area effective immediately. The blue area on the map to the right of the screen being properties within 200 metres and allowing up to 10 storeys. And yellow is 400 metres, allowing up to six storeys of residential development. The majority of land in this area is already planned for higher density. However, commercial parking requirements for the downtown will have to be reviewed with recommendations brought back for Council's consideration as a future date. The third bill is related to residential development in what is called small-scale multi-unit housing. It permits one accessory unit in all single and duplex zones across BC. In Chilliwack, this means allowing up to four units on lots greater than 280 square meters. Bylaws for small-scale multi-unit housing must be adopted by June 30th of 2024. The new rules also prohibits public hearings from for residential development that is consistent with the official community plan. And amendments to the official community plan and zoning bylaw are also required to address 20 years of housing need and this process must be completed by the end of 2025. So the provincial legislation uses the urban boundary to limit where changes apply. All land within the blue hatched area on the map at the right of the screen is part of the urban boundary. Neighbourhoods like Promontory, Chilliwack Mountain, Rosedale, Yarrow, etc. are outside of this area not subject to the new rules. Route 51, which is the black dotted line, is not considered frequent transit at this time. A high level utility re review will be required to identify areas to apply for extensions to these changes. For example, areas without sufficient water and sanitary sewer capacity to meet increased density rules. And all new construction will have to meet flood construction levels as per normal practice. And all of these legislative changes will have an impact on existing neighbourhoods. It means infill development can occur throughout the urban area. There will likely need to be changes to downtown parking standards as residential development parking will now be at the discretion of the developer. And there will be no more public hearings for residential development. But notice of applications will still have to be provided to the public. So in terms of next steps, the city's public hearing and public information bylaw will need to be updated and brought to council in the coming weeks. A small scale multi-unit housing bylaw is being prepared and would need to be adopted by council by June, 2024. A transit oriented area bylaw will be prepared and to be presented to council for adoption by June, 2024. And staff will also review and bring forward potential recommendations regarding the development and or amenity cost charge programs for council's consideration in the next year or so. And that concludes a brief update of the many new rules concerning residential development that will impact the city. Any questions? Big changes coming. Questions, comments? Councillor Reed. I'm sure I want to be the first to start, but I'll throw just a few things out there. Um, thank you very much for putting all of that together. I know it's been a huge impact on the planning team uh, with these new legislation coming with this new legislation coming down. And so, first of all, thank you to planning for the, all the hard work and uh, dedication to this project. Um, just I think probably some of my biggest concerns about this is the public hearing process of course which takes the voice out of the community and um, at this time anyways and puts it into just you know what's been sitting there before through the OCP and so you know I think it's probably um, as we look through no, new OCPs I think by 2030 am I correct? Uh, the first review will be end of 2025, and then OCPs would have to be reviewed every five years. Every five years. So um, how important it will be for a community to really come out and um, share their thoughts at that time. And that will be the time now where communities are allowed to share their thoughts and, and engagement will be extremely important. So call for all people to come out and, and engage in that process. Um, and then the other concern uh, around this is our downtown parking. So a huge concern concern with developers not having to put in um, parking spots as we move forward. Um, looks like we'll have to charge and uh, for parking in the downtown core, which right now is such a nice 
option to not have to charge our local residents and visitors that come into the community to shop in our downtown stores and support local businesses. And so that is something that will probably have to come as uh, this process moves forward. So it's uh, it wasn't the Merry Christmas news that we probably wanted to see at this time of year, but thank you to staff for putting this together. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mercer. Thank you, Your Worship. It's um, it's hard to know where to start, but I'll I'll keep it succinct in the interest of time. But you know, I th I don't think anybody could argue that there's a requirement for affordable housing. Um, I, that's uh, that's kind of one of those no joke situations. There's people that are struggling; they need housing, and uh, the inventory just doesn't exist. But the wisdom of what we're hearing from our provincial government uh, is again, um, you know, to be questioned. Uh, it was a knee-jerk reaction with lack of any consultation from the cities that actually do this for a living and for a business. Um, when they were pressured as to who they talked to before our premier, our, our nominated premier, um, Mr. Eby, was, uh, came out with this announcement, um, the response to consultation was, we, well, we did, we did consult. We consulted with Victoria, Kelowna, and I believe Kimberly. Uh, that's it. I think Kimberly has one traffic light. Uh, and that was the consultation that was done across the province before this harebrained uh, strategy was put in place. And I think what the public needs to know is that it's easy to say, you know, we're doing all this for affordable housing. Yay, that's a great I idea. But the devil's in the detail. And when you peel back this onion and start reading what the province is putting it in place, I don't think there's many citizens in, in British Columbia that would be actually supportive of it. And, uh, you know, I know Councillor Reed's already talked about a uh, little bit about downtown. Imagine building a parking tower downtown and you don't have to put any parking in it. Like 10 stories of apartments with no parking. Um, like, it's just nonsensical. Um, and this isn't Burnaby, it isn't Vancouver, but it's a uh, one-size-fits-all shove it down city's throat strategy for the province. Um, and most cities in Chilliwack's included with this kind of development, we don't have the infrastructure. And this is where people need to pay attention because the premier and this government's solution to <coughs> not having enough infrastructure and the things that we require um, is for the developer to add it to the development costs so that the, the, the city can obtain the the money that's needed to take care of fire and policing and some of the other things that are required, they're allowing cities to do to add it to the development costs that developers will charge the people that are, are building their buildings. So it's going to be a flow through cost that goes back to the consumers. So through this exercise of affordable housing, the housing is going to get more expensive. It's just, uh, and I know others here will have uh, ideas, but this, uh, the devil's in the detail. Um, there's not a lot of this that makes sense except that we need affordable housing, but this knee-jerk reaction uh, on the part of the province that our own two MLAs are completely silent on, by the way. We've heard nothing from them. Uh, we don't know if we have their support or what they're saying to government on how this will impact the city of Chilliwack. Um, you know, and only yesterday uh, I was approached by a gentleman who lives, uh, I believe, the Sardis Park area. Um, and in the neighborhood, there's a beautiful rancher. And, and in discussion with the people that own the rancher, they're already aware of the um, this new change that's coming. And their very large R1A lot, they're able to subdivide into two R1A lots. And a nicely established neighborhood with well-kept homes that have been there, some of them for decades, the plan is to put uh, a fourplex on each of the R1A lots uh, in Sardis Park. Um, this takes the tools away from the city to manage uh, uh, development in our city, uh, to be responsible, to be respectful of the infrastructure that we have, then what we have to, what we have to increase at taxpayer expense, and this ignores it all. But they consulted with Kimberly. Nicely done. Thank you. That's good. Well, um, there has been a lot said, and, and without a doubt, Chilliwack uh, is the second, I believe, fastest growing city within Canada. But I would challenge this government that they're welcome to come to our planning department and see how fast we move and how what, what amazing staff we have. Um, a council that 
definitely has an open mind in, in absorbing growth and certainly we need affordable housing. But what I'm concerned about and what is clear to me is the province is conducting itself in a condescending manner. They think they know what is best for cities across this province. Um, they don't feel that they need to um, engage with the cities or seek their input. And I want to be very clear, this government's move is completely unhinged. They, Chilliwack has worked hard, um, and, and I know other municipalities maybe are a lot slower, and maybe this will assist in some of that. But I think we've done an exceptional job here in Chilliwack. Um, but lo and behold, this government is moving ahead full steam. Uh, they don't think the consultation is needed. Um, and I, as was mentioned by Councillor Mercer, I, where are our MLAs? Um, are they just doing whatever King David Eby says in Victoria and this is, this is what's going to happen? People need to be really um, aware of what's happening. There's no infrastructure dollars allocated, no hospital expansion, no uh, wastewater treatment expansion in our community. Um, what about, um, you know, everything that comes with, with growth, like parking? Like now we have to most likely implement pay parking or parking passes downtown. That means we need to um, hire more uh, by law enforcement in our community, which is a, a direct cost to our taxpayers of this community. Um, and we passed at our last meeting, one of the, or I think it is the highest um, tax increase that we've ever seen due to the pressures of inflation. But I really cringe uh, where we're going to be next year at this stage of the game when um, we're dealing with unintended consequences. Um, to be clear, that the language the province is using is public hearings are prohibited. Prohibited, meaning screw you all. At the end of the day, we know what's best here in Victoria. You need to do it. And um, I, I just find that <laughs> what's next? Does that mean um, may, we might have to get rid of municipal government? One of the wise men of Victoria will run our city. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm frustrated. I think we all are. I think Mark October 19th, 2024 on your calendars. It's the next provincial election. Maybe it is time to send a strong message to this provincial government that going a route that's so undemocratic is not in the benefit of our citizens of our community. And I, uh, I really think that uh, our MLAs are missing in action uh, when it comes to this. That the whole not connecting with the city that they represent, ridiculous. That's it for me. Thank you. Well said, Councillor Shields. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship, and uh, I, I'm certainly not going to repeat anything that's already been said by the previous three councillors. I think they've hit the nail on the head that, that this is just a lack of planning, lack of consultation, and, and uh, it's, it's disgraceful, actually, what they're, what they're doing and how they're just, uh, they're just telling us what to do, and that's not the way provincial and municipal governments should work together. I look at our role as municipal government and we don't try to just make housing, we try to make neighborhoods, we try to make a city. And that's what I think we've been very successful at. Um, we've we've multi-unit residential, we've, we've put through in my five years, we've put through a lot of multi-unit residential and, they, and that seems to be what they're pushing, but we're doing our part out here. We're a growing city and we make sure that we accommodate people that wanna live here. I think that's, you know, and, and Chilliwack is a place that people wanna live. We start going through this and, and I don't know, what, why, we're, do you wanna live in Chilliwack if it's just a bunch of houses? Like we, we plan on, building a city that people want to live in. Right now, it's just the, the way they look at it, it's just it's just housing. Everything's just housing. There's no forethought, there's no, and, and one thing that, um, another thing that uh, um, they haven't thought about is is schooling and schools. And I know that the, the city of Surrey has just uh, stepped up last night and, and, and said, well, let's hold, the, let's hold the phone here because we, you know, what are you going to do about schooling? If you're going to double the population, what are you going to do about schooling? Because they're not building a lot of schools right now. I don't, you know, the money seems to be going everywhere but to uh, those types of things. So it, I, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm disgusted like everybody else in this room. And, and uh, you know, I wish there was more we could do other than, as Councillor Clute said, another election coming up. Councillor Lum. Hey, well, it's nice to see that everybody's in the holiday spirit. Um, <laughs> it's always it's always a good uh, discussion around the table. I think, um, you know, 
one of the challenges with uh, with a big uh, sweeping change like this is is um, when you feel like you've been doing the right thing and you feel like you've been doing your your very best as a city to uh, to take your fair share of growth and to and to balance that against uh, the other all the other needs of the citizens. Um, and then you get a big, uh, you get caught up in this kind of uh, big wave of, of change um, that uh, you obviously get the, the, the kind of response that you're hearing uh, from, from Mayor and Councillor right now. I guess um, I'll try and leave us on a, a little bit more of a hopeful note in that um, if you're watching or you have been watching the city of Chilliwack and the way we've been able to balance um, an extreme amount of growth in our city. I think there is hope that you can do that without doing it, with balancing growth, without stepping on the things that make uh, our city uh, kind of a unique place that keeps its local uh, small town characteristics and neighborly characteristics. And uh, and I think we've been doing a good job at that. And um, up until I think last week, um, I was I was really really frustrated. I had some I, maybe some conversations that talked me a bit more off the ledge. I talked with some of the folks from our development community, and they talked about you know practically what you might see um, result in some of these some of these changes. Uh, the folks that I talked to didn't think that it was going to be quite as extreme as the as as the picture that uh, that may be painted. And I think what we're talking about here is maybe the worst case possible scenario um, but uh, but they were a little bit more balanced in terms of uh, what how they thought that might manifest itself um, in, in reality in Chilliwack other cities might 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 find you know uh, bigger changes but in Chilliwack where we've been uh, we have established neighborhoods and, and established density already across the city so there are fewer I guess opportunities for the larger kind of wholesale um, really I would say uh, considerable density changes that you might see in other communities so I guess I would just say yes I, 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 I understand the the frustration um, you know I guess if I'm trying to be charitable towards the province a little bit I'll probably get uh, something thrown at me here, but uh, they have some blunt force objects that they can uh, they can use levers that they have to pull. Um, but I would have said, you know, maybe look around at some of the other uh, examples, and I would have put Chilliwack forward as a as a good example of of how we've been able to balance that density, how we've been able to balance kind of a, ch a challenged um, urban containment boundary. Um, how we've been able to balance the fact that we've got large portions of our our community which are agricultural and then hillside and we've been able to do it and still come up with developments that are winning awards all over the place and uh and i say you know i still think there's 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 good things to look forward to and i think um you know, i don't want the community to come come away from this feeling overly scared you're still going to have counsel at the table you're still going to have people who are uh who are doing their best to hold the line given the legislation that's come down that's all that was fairly cheery councillor lum i'm 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 i'm, 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 I'm yeah and it's usually the opposite of that but uh and not making you know light of this whole situation i am in agreement with other councillors at, at at this table you know it's a huge change it's on our doorstep here and i'm wondering if, if the government has has thought about where are all these people going to work maybe it's time to have a look at the alc and 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 get some land out so we can add to our industrial base and attract more more business in food processing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, are they going to be commuting up, up up and down a highway that's that's you know forty years uh, uh, you know behind in in its in its uh, you know like amount of um, expansion that has not happened? And expansion is not going to happen out here for for at least ten years. So, not a lot of thoughts been given to this. Uh, I think somebody says one size fits all. 
No, it doesn't one size fit all. Uh, as you know, as Councillor Clute said, our, our our planning department is second to none in the valley, and and uh, um, there's going to be more and more pushback um, f from other communities. I sit on the Ur Urban Mayors Caucus, and that's myself and 16 other mayors with over 100,000. Um, the conversation last meeting was all about this and 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 the changes that are on our doorsteps here and and. Uh, with again the lack of consultation which it always kind of boils down to so i guess we shall see mr clute thank you and just a question through to staff do we um anticipate that uh, we will not have pub our uh, evening meetings uh, very frequently anymore uh miss villeneuve or? your worship through to councillor clute uh planning and legislative services departments are just working through those details but it is possible that um a reduced evening meeting schedule would result but we will bring the board recommendations and options to council for their consideration. Okay, and then I had one other question. In the presentation, you mentioned that a 2,800 square foot, a 2,800 square meter lot could accommodate up to four dwelling units. So that's like, what, 28 by, or 30 by 95 square uh, lot that could absorb four units. Um, does that mean they would have the op what's the height restriction like today a single family dwelling could be 10 meters would we anticipate that it could be higher Ms. Fildu? Uh, your worship to councillor clute the province has put out some recommended standards uh, which we are reviewing um, against what we currently have in place uh, they're not much different than what our maximum height um, for residential buildings are but again uh, we are working through those details and we'll be bringing um, those any proposed bylaw changes for to council for their consideration um, and with respect to allowing four units on on a lot um, of 280 square meters there would still need to prove out uh, parking uh, and setbacks uh, and massing and all of that would have to be uh, designed accordingly to the to the standards in place before four units could be permitted Okay, and then one last question, if I may. Um, so today, the design review committee reviews all multifamily within the community as well as uh, uh, commercial and institutional and industrial. Um, my question is, now that they are able to accommodate more than two dwelling units, um, would that would we have an opportunity as a city to um, look at the designs that are being proposed over two units? Uh, your worship through to Councillor Clute. Uh, yes, uh, currently the design guidelines are triggered by three or more units uh, being developed on the lot. And we, uh, the planning department is looking at the design guidelines and implications and how best to address the form and character impacts in these neighborhoods with these changes. So if I hear talk, and I think it's coming down from the federal government, um, that they're going to produce a Sears catalog of dwelling units or whatever the case may be from back in the, after the war. Um, what if they, it could, they could be really okay, like could be totally fine. I'll give them benefit of the doubt, but what if they're terrible? Like, do we have the ability to say uh, no? Uh, Your Worship, through to Councillor Clute. Uh, yes, those uh, standards or designs that the province is uh, putting forward, it, my understanding is that that will be uh, optional for uh, municipalities. They may or may not choose to implement those guidelines. Um, certainly from our perspective, we'll be continuing to you know, streamline and make sure our application processes are as efficient as possible so that we can move through the approvals process and into uh, building permit stage as quickly as possible. And that's what we'll be looking to bring forward to council is, is streamlining these processes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> And just um, just for some point of clarification, now the province, I believe, has put fifty-one million dollars on the table to to be spread amongst all the communities in 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 British Columbia that will will be affected by this, um, because the cost of of um, hiring consultants to do your your OCPs, et cetera, et cetera, is going to be exorbitant. Is that true? Is that uh your Worship, yes, the province has said that there is $51 million that will be allocated across all communities uh, to help uh, with these implementation uh, requirements. We don't know what that means for Chilliwack yet, and the province is saying they will be releasing those details in the new year at some point. So. Okay. There's a lot of unanswered questions here that just um, 
keep getting shoved down our throats here. It's just, um, they need to do a better job. Okay, anything else? Uh, I'll call for the question. All those in favor, opposed? Uh, it, it, it's carried with <laughs> disgruntlement. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Next item, Madam Clerk. Recommendation that council authorize staff not to enforce the zoning bylaw or BC building code for the specific use of the wellness center located at 45951 Trethway Avenue until March 31st, 2024, as contained within the staff report dated December 11th, 2023. Okay, moved by Council Mercer, second Council Reed. Discussion? And I understand what the plan is. It'll there'll be a, a further three years once they once BC Housing comes up with some sort of a, a strategy moving forward. Is that? There's ongoing discussions right okay. now with okay. possible funders. Good, good. Answer them. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. And uh, yeah, about the ongoing discussions because that that's something you know. And then again, if if uh, people recall the last time we were. We did this and the time before that and the time before that and before that maybe not in this particular property but these temporary extensions where we're waiting for uh for delays to be resolved or we're waiting for a better place to be found has there been a discussion by the province uh or with the province about the actual like kind of uh long-term uh acquisition of properties in in or around this area it's uh this was something that came up over and over there's businesses in that area that have that have uh, spoken to us at length about their concerns and I'm just wondering have they uh, received offers for their property from the province on this uh, if we're looking at if they are the province looking at this fitting into the long-term picture of, uh, of, of what they're going to need for uh, for homelessness okay Ms. Ferris do you want to start maybe Ms. Vilna can or Thank you, Mayor, through to Councillor Lum. At this time, I don't have the answer to that question. Um, I'm not aware of any office offers being made. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, I know it's always, it's, it's always us having to make these decisions kind of under the gun, facing down another winter. And, uh, and we do it because it's the right thing to do because nobody wants to make any kind of decision of put somebody out on, on the street, uh, you know, in, in the cold. Um, but... It's not. Uh, it's certainly not uh, a comprehensive approach that you'd think uh, we'd want to see in terms of uh, long-term provincial investment. I know there there's some delays on that Rowett project. Uh, it's been delayed for quite some time. I understand it's back maybe on track a little bit. I'm not sure. Yep, it is. But uh, I'm just not interested in in delaying um, further or doing these temporary kind of three month, four month, one month, waiting till there's a crisis kind of thing. I think we need a comprehensive approach. This is one where I think, you know, the, the province would be uh, would be wise to approach the, some of the landholders there if they're going to start uh, you thinking about this place as a long term um, uh, solution. Then uh, they should probably make some offers, you know. Dr. Shields. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. And just uh, through to Ms. Ferris, um, a few months ago we had some issues with with uh, security wasn't really keeping up, upholding the good neighbor agreement that the Wellness Centre had with uh, some of the local businesses and residents. I haven't heard anything lately. Has it uh, has it improved over there for the businesses, or, or are we still hearing complaints? Mayor Popoff yep. through to um, Shields. Sorry, Councillor Shields. Shields sorry. <laughs> um, so there is a outreach that does do patrols in the neighborhood from both the Wellness Center and the Supportive Housing. They're out there every day. They do meet with neighbors on a regular basis, and I have not received any complaints recently. That's good. That's good. I always feel bad for the, you know, we, we have kind of started out and, and this sort of carries on to what Councillor Lum said that there needs to be a a solution not these temporary fixes and and the wellness center was a the the concept is there the location was was went through there as temporary and and we're starting to get past that temporary point which you know not really fair to the to the residents in the neighborhood but uh, on the same token it's I mean they do good things and it wouldn't be fair to 
to close it down at this point and, and displace a lot of people that depend on, on the wildlife center. That is center. correct, so. yep. Between 100 and 150 contacts a day, so it's uh, there's there's definitely a need. So, any further questions, comments, Councillor Long? Yeah, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, and so, sorry, the outreach is is in place, and and we don't foresee that changing. That's and the businesses all still have that contact. It's going to be the same person for the foreseeable foreseeable future. Yes. Okay, and so um, I I find it challenging that that we haven't heard any of the complaints maybe they're just making complaints to the to the to the wrong uh person because certainly my phone's still ringing with uh with complaints uh in the area uh councillor clute snotting his head i know uh, councillor shields has had them so maybe they're just not giving the complaints to, to the to the right people so um, um maybe we'll chat after and make sure that uh, they get the the right phone number okay any for the questions, comments, call a question. All those in favor? Opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next are the mayor and councillor's reports. Let's put it over to the charity councillor Lum. Hey, sure am. Yeah. No, just um, uh, fairly light last couple of, uh, of weeks. Um, just give me a, uh, one second. Um, we had a uh, our OIC meeting and our Christmas social on the 6th. Um, on the 7th, we had a regional and corporate services committee meeting. And that day, I was at the uh, curling club for the RCMP uh, levy. So nice to see uh, lots of folks there. Our CSGS uh, committee met on the 8th. I took part in a, a UFE Chilliwack uh, academic campus planning uh, kind of uh, discussion on the uh, 11th. On the 12th, we had a meeting here at uh, City Hall. And uh, I believe that was it for me. Sorry, no, we had a FERD uh, board meeting on the 14th uh, evening. And uh, that was it uh, for me, Your Worship. I'd just like to take the opportunity I was to wish everybody a uh, very uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Um, it's, uh, it is a, a, a wonderful and special time of year. Um, we have, a, I, of course, I have a three-year-old and, uh, and everything is more magical uh, when you have a three-year-old at this time of year. So despite every day me having to answer the same question to him, no, not tonight. It's not tonight. Not quite yet. It's still coming. Uh, yeah, we're we're on the countdown now, so we're we're getting closer. And um, I just hope everybody has a, an opportunity to spend uh, time with uh, loved ones and those special to you, and uh, and enjoy a little bit of uh, downtime. So that's all for me, Your Worship. And uh, I mean, but also just uh, wish everybody, all our staff, uh, as well. A very uh, best of the season. Mr. Westring. Thanks, Your Worship. On December 6th, uh, we got together with all our committee members uh, just as a social to thank them for everything that they do throughout the year. So that was, uh, it's always very special. Um, later that evening, I spoke at the Ann Davis Transition Society um, where we remembered the 14 women who were murdered in Montreal in 1989 at the Ecole Polytechnique. Um, on December 12th, we had a BC Housing Target update, which um, obviously got my colleagues around the table a little fired up, but, um, but that was worthwhile news as well. That we just got to manage, manage um, those bills in the next year. Um, on the 15th, uh, we had a tour of the museum with the Chillock Public Art Committee, and um, that's it for me. And I also want to wish everyone a happy uh, holidays and all the best in 2024. Looking forward to that. I think it's going to be an awesome year. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Clute. Thank you. Uh, as was mentioned, the uh, Christmas uh, Committee social event was on the 6th. Uh, on the 7th, uh, I <coughs> attended the uh, Lower Mainland Local Government Association Executive um, Board meeting um, for getting prepared for our conference in May uh, in Whistler. And I'd encourage my council colleagues more than ever to attend if possible, given some of the uh, direction this province seems to be moving in. Um, on the 12th, Tuesday the 12th, we had a design review advisory committee meeting uh, where we had, uh, I believe, three proposals before us. Um, and then the 14th, we had the Fraser Valley um, 
regional hospital re, uh, hospital district board meetings and the regional district meetings. Um, we did have a presentation um, by Dr. Van Wyk of the um, point in time homeless count across the region and Chilliwack uh, unfortunately now holds the title of having the most uh, uh, homeless in our area, which is really discouraging uh, given all the hard work um, by municipal partners, by our, uh, by our city, by our staff. Um, and I think it's uh, high time that the province really ask uh, what, what they're doing, is it actually working? Um, and then finally, I just wanna take the time to wish everybody um, a wonderful Christmas season, holiday season, in whatever way you celebrate. Um, I know as a Christian, for us, it's a time of anticipation and Advent and um, look forward to celebrating with family and, and wish everybody joy and peace uh, going forward into the new year. Thank you. Shields. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I too on December 6th was at the annual Christmas social for our committee members. Uh, on the 10th of December, I got to attend the uh, staff Christmas party for the uh, Cultural Center, which was nice to meet some of the staff. Um, the 11th uh, attended the UFV session on the Chilliwack Academic Campus Master Plan. Um, other than that, it was pretty quiet, um, and uh, I too would you know, like to wish everybody a, a very Merry Christmas and, and, and the happiest of New Year's. Um, I'd just like to give a special shout out to, we have a lot of great local organizations that, that uh, this time of year work very hard to, for the less fortunate people out there that don't quite have the Christmases that we are looking forward to with we're family and friends and and they get out there whether it be you know those without housing whether it be seniors you know whether it be kids that that you know their parents are in a financial situation they can't uh, they can't afford presents and and uh, and these people are, are working their butts off for a good part of December and uh, making sure that most of them you know see something on Christmas morning and uh, I think a big thank you to the the staff of these organizations the volunteers um, the donors I mean this wouldn't happen without donors and and as we all know Chilliwack uh, when there's when there's a call Chilliwack typically delivers so um, good on that always makes me proud at this time of year to be uh, be a, a resident of Chilliwack so and thanks for touching on that, Councillor Shields. That's important to say, absolutely. Councillor Reed. Thank you, Your Worship. On December 7th, uh, we had a Heritage Advisory Committee meeting. On December 8th, with Councillor Mercer and Councillor Lum, uh, I got an invite to attend the Community Safety Governance Committee meeting, so thank you for that. December 11th, the UFV Master Plan meeting. On December 13th, the SEPCO board meeting with yourself. And uh, December 14th, JR uh, FM had their open house, which I attended and got to ask a lot of questions to the program manager over there that I've been wondering about for a long time. So about the future of radio. And uh, December 15th, I had a meeting with MLA Patton and Fraser Health. And um, I too wanna just acknowledge um, the holiday season that's upon us. and and best wishes to everybody um, for peace and joy for sure uh, as we move forward in the next couple of weeks. And also just a reflection on the year for me and I encourage everybody to kind of reflect on their years as they um, have had probably so many things to be thankful for and grateful for. And uh, I here sitting at the table, it's been my first full year uh, sitting around this table and I'm grateful for this, for the, um, the opportunity to represent our city at this table uh, along with all of you and just to say thank you to staff and uh, my fellow councillors as well for helping me along in the process and um, it's been a great first year so I'm very thankful for that and looking forward to 2024. Excellent. Answer Mercer. Thank you Your Worship. Uh, before I start I just uh like to reflect for a second. I did get the opportunity to spend an evening with Councillor Lum's uh, three-year-old son and it was a lesson for me with uh, all the bunch of kids we have and grandkids we have we've been going through life leaving snacks for Santa Claus out on Christmas Eve and Councillor Lum's son informed me that the best snack to leave out for Santa on Christmas Eve is wine 
<laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> we've 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 got takes it after his mother. <laughs> oh, we, that's we, not fair. She's not here to defend herself. We, we we got it wrong as to what Santa and the reindeer wanted, but uh, um, it was a good lesson for us. Um, <clears throat> on the sixth, our monthly meeting with our um, chief of police with the RCMP. Um, the uh, on that same day, we got the opportunity to thank our, our committee members and at, at Christmas social. They give of their time selflessly, all, selflessly all, all year, and it was uh, great to get together with them. On the 7th, the RCMP's uh, partner Christmas levy, always uh, great to go and reconnect with faces uh, from the past. Uh, on the 8th, it was mentioned by Councilor Reed, the Community Safety Governance Committee <coughs> meeting, and um, I, I, can't take, I can't not take the opportunity uh, to say that, uh, you know, this meeting uh, is in place four times a year. And it goes over the uh, city's uh, community safety plan that all of the partners in the government were a part of uh, creating. Uh, and again, on this committee, our, our MLA uh, sent her apologies that she was busy doing something else. And within 10 minutes of the meeting start, the Solicitor General's office and BC Housing uh, sent their regrets that they had a conflicting meeting. Um, it seems that uh, community safety is important to all of us, but. Uh, a little bit lacking on our, our provincial partners. Um, on the, um, sorry, on the 12th, um, um, a design review advisory committee meeting, and again, three great uh, projects were presented to us that's going to uh, make our community an even better place. On the 14th, the FVRD and regional and hospital board meeting. Um, and uh, before I sign off, a special thanks, and let's all remember while we're enjoying Christmas Eve with our families and Christmas Day with our families that uh, our emergency services uh, people, fire, police, and ambulance are uh, out working, keeping us safe, uh, as well as our city operations folks. Uh, if, um, if it gets cold, you're going to see them on the streets on Christmas Day putting out brine or uh, maybe even clearing snow. So uh, let's all think about them and, and give them a wave uh, on those special days when uh, they're out there serving us and keeping us in good shape. And then finally for me, um, it's, it's the season to be merry and to be jolly. And if you're drinking, please don't drive. There's so many opportunities in the cities to get a ride home. Uh, please use them and uh, keep everybody safe. And in closing, Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, and we'll see you next year. Great. Now, over and above the meetings that I attended with the fellow councillors on the on the sixth, I chaired the Housing First Task Team meeting. Later on that afternoon, I took an Abar Watch meeting. Um, on the twelfth, I sat in on the BC Urban Mayors Caucus meeting. Uh, the 13th, I did my starfish hamper delivery. Uh, on the 15th, I attended the Chilliwack District Seniors Resource Society Christmas lunch. The Evergreen Hill, I couldn't find a seat. It was packed. It was packed. It's very, very well attended event. So that was pretty cool. Uh, on a personal note, um, I want to shout out to the Alger brothers and their team for the work that they've done in our five corners area, 1881. Uh, they have created a, a magical space which has attracted folks from all over the lower mainland um, thank you gentlemen for the work that you guys have done to make it a magical place for our for our you know our, you know our residents and other community members to come and you know, look and enjoy and see what chilliwack is all about it uh it, it it is truly a cool place to go. I was down there for a little happy hour glass of wine last Friday about four o'clock and I, as the evening progressed, more and more people were down there with their kids and their strollers and their dogs, and Santa Claus was ripping around. The train was going around. It was just, just a awesome, you know, like environment to be in. So, uh, thank you, Alger Brothers, for all your hard work. And uh, I too want to wish everybody a a safe and merry Christmas, happy holidays, hang out with your family, be safe. And that's all I have. Next item. Next is a motion to adjourn to a closed session pursuant to section 91 I, E, K, and F of the Community Charter. Uh, move Councillor Shields, second Councillor Westinghouse. Those in favour, we are adjourned. Thank you.